Ooh, that looks tasty. This party have no spook juice. Party not good party with no spook juice. Party not party at all with no spook juice. Want good party, you get spook juice. No spook juice, me leave party. Welcome folks, Day the Hung Gamer is back with another Kickstarter preview, and today we are talking about Monsters on Board, published by Final Frontier Games, designed by Alexander Mikic, Ivo Neskovic, and Samoil Petreski, with art by the Micho. And I apologize for all the names that I said incorrectly. Now, before we go any further, please make sure you turn on your Klingon subtitles, because if I make any mistakes, that is where you'll find the corrections. Additionally, I do need to point out that everything you see here is still in the prototype phase, and is both subject to change and, well, improvement as we see some of it. What Monsters on Board is, is it is a dice drafting game where you are trying to put on the best monster party possible. But just before the party, you find out, ooh, you're out of spook juice. And everybody knows, well, anybody who's anybody knows, you don't have a monster bash without some spook juice. So you got to make some. To do that, you got to send your grunts out into human lands and scare them and distill that fear into some good old tasty spook juice. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played and just want to jump ahead to my final thoughts, then you want to go to the timestamp on the screen, right? Now, for those of us still here, let's talk a bit about how this game works and, well, what you see in front of you. So this is just one player board. I got a big old bag of dice here, which I'll move out of the way for the moment. I got a little dice car here, and I will say that if the meeple boats for Merchant's Cove or any judge of quality. These will stick together much better, though I believe I'm the third reviewer to get this prototype, and it's taken a little bit of beating in transport. But a little car for some dice to go in there. Then we have a bunch of minions here. Get a little look at that. And we have our grunts. I'll just grab one of these guys. I'll show you these more in detail a little bit later. There you go. Over here we have a marker for our malice. Malice is your currency in the game. Here we have three dice that represent Spider Jack and how full the Spider Jack is. And you want a full Spider Jack, let me just tell you. If you're going to a party, you make sure your Spider Jack is full. Then we have this, which is calling of the Spider Jack, and it'll be a way to get points. Over here is where you're going to put the dice that you draft. And then over here is where these minions are going to be wandering around through the neighborhood, scaring up their spook juice and getting you other bonuses as you go. The last thing is each player is going to get a prophecy card. And these cards relate directly to these three rows here. And it tells you on the card what you have to do to get in-game scoring bonuses. I'm not going to go too much into that other than say it might be all the columns have to be a, the same color or the same number, or you have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, or six, five, four, three, two, one, or whatever it is, it tells you what it does. And if you accomplish it at the end of the game, bully for you, you get extra points. And then there's also a scoring board to have off to the side, and I will show you that when I get to the phase of the game where you actually deal with it. Now, let's jump in. What's gonna happen is you're gonna play this game over six rounds. And each round, what you're gonna do is you're going to pull six dice out of the bag and you're going to roll them and you're going to put them in your car without changing the numbers that you rolled in any way shape or form and every single player is going to do the same thing i should probably turn these a little bit to give you a better view then what you're going to do is you're going to pick one that you want and you will put it over by your dock i'll show you that in just a second then you'll pass your car someone else's car will drive up You'll pick another one, you pass your car, so, and so on, until each person has drafted four dice. I'm going to move the car out of the way. And let's talk a little bit about some of the symbols on these dice and how they're used. So what's going to happen is I said you're going to put your dice on the docks. And so once you've gotten all of your dice, and so what you'll do is you place them just off the board. And then the next phase is you're moving into bringing your lord dice. These are monster lords, and you're going to put them on the dock here. And so you'll grab it. Again, you don't change the number, and you place it on the dock. Whatever color you place, that allows you to move your monster from 
its space where it's colored to the next colored space on the path there. And as you go, you'll see sometimes there are symbols on them, and that means if your monster lands on them, then you get, I should say, if your grunt lands on them, you get to take another action, whatever it may be. Now, I'm not going to go into what all of those mean. Then, once you've placed all four of your dice and moved all four of your grunts, you're then going to pick one of these that's going to be turned into malice. And that simply means you're going to take it, you're going to put it here, and you're going to reference the chart right here. My number here is a six. That means I get four malice, and then you can pretty much throw that die away. It goes back into the bag. Then your others, in the order of your choosing, you're going to take them and you're going to place them down on the spider jack rows. And you can place them in whatever row you want. You just have to make sure it slides all the way over to the left. And now this is where these symbols on the dice are going to matter, because each one does something different. For example, the pumpkin here, that pumps up your spider jack, feeds them, makes them a little less hungry, a little bigger. This thing here allows you to move one of these minions out into the neighborhood, and it will be a way for your grunt to skip over and move further faster. These plus or minuses, as you can guess, will up or reduce your die value by one, though of course it does have to be in the same spider jack row, so I actually cheated there. And this little candy corn looking thing here is calling spider jack, which lets you move this marker up. When this marker gets to one of these spots, you do what it says on the on the board there. I'm not going to go into all of them, but for, for example, the fist here would be you gain more malice. I've already told you that moves a little minions about. And then this symbol here is important because it lets you score all of your dice you have up there. And you'll gain spook juice, which is your victory points, equal to whatever the added up sum is there. So in this case, 5, 10, 12. However, at any time you are scoring or dealing with these spider jack rows here, and yes, that also includes the end game scoring with these cards, you can only activate the dice equal to the number showing on spider jack. So in this case, if I got this all the way over here and was activating that scoring of spook juice, I would get 5, 10 because I only have a two right there. If I had a five, then I'd be able to add a one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So for a lot of these prophecy cards, you gotta have a six or you can't get the benefit. And you're gonna play through six rounds, and at the end, your entire board here will be filled up, and you're gonna see who has the most spook juice. Now, also, at the end of every round, you're going to get to spend this malice, and you're going to spend the malice over on the other board where you're going to be buying some interesting stuff. Let me show you. Now, here we have the scoring board where you track your score. So if I had 21, 21 spook juice, and you get the idea, and, some and you'll be tracking that as you go. But at the end of each round, you're also going to be making purchases from the board. And you'll see here the cost in malice for each thing. You can get ghosts, which you get to place out on the neighborhoods. And so as those grunts are moving along and they land on these things, you get various bonuses. And then down here, you have these great old ones. And these guys are visitors to your party. And the core of what these guys are is they are end game scoring. Each one has a different end game scoring bonus that you can get. However, the other thing about them is you can at any time spend one malice and then activate any of these abilities here on the back. And these are all the abilities you can get throughout the game that are on the dice or you get by stepping on them in the neighborhood, plus the ability to do a dice swap on your spider jack rows. And the only other thing that I need to tell you about how this works is every time you buy something, it does get replaced with another one. And at the end of the round, if things aren't bought, there'll be a little bit of cycling as well. So these are regularly changing as you go. But really, but that's it. That is Monsters on Board. So what do I like about this game? So first of all, I like the art. I like the way it looks. The colors are great. These, I don't know how well you can see them, but these little miniatures here are just awesome looking. They just look fantastic. I adore them. They are amazing. They're great. And these are just the prototype ones. I enjoy the little 
a little dice mobile here. It's cute. It's fun. The layout's good. It's very attractive. So all about that, I really enjoy. I think this is another example of the Micho doing, well, really good work, as I usually think he does. It's tongue in cheek. It's colorful. It's bright. Great. In the same vein, I also really appreciate that this is a Halloween monster game that isn't actually scary. It's fun. It's more family style. And it just, yes, it's Halloween-y, but you know, you could really play this at any time. It's just a very light, fun, enjoyable theme. And again, everything about it, I think, captures that feeling. Now, let's talk about the actual mechanics. Things that I really like. I like this in-game scoring. I like the way that works as you're drafting. You're not only trying to figure out the best way to move your minions along to get one or two, maybe all the way to the end because there's more bonuses you get to the end. And by moving them around, maybe you get to mess with your dice over here and adjust them and change their numbers and things like that and try to make sure you're able to, to get this here. But of course, to be able to get this here, you have to up these spider jack things and you have to get make sure you're doing that right. And then of course you're doing that. Maybe you have really high numbers. So then of course you wanna get the calling spider jack all the way up here so you can get those bonuses. And as you can hear, as I'm saying all this, there are a ton, a ton of options. And I'm not even talking about the adding of the ghosts out here to give you more bonuses and more abilities and then putting the minions out here in order to allow your grunt when it gets there to go doink and just bounce on over and get to the next thing. I mean, there are so, so many options and there's so many things to do. And I like that. I like that because you can't do everything. You have to be opportunistic, see what you can get, find a plan and then pursue it or you're just gonna lose, and that's great. It is a little point salad -y, but I think in the best way, because if you try to do a little of everything, you're not gonna win. You have to pick a path and go down it, and that's fantastic. I also love all the different things that are on the dice. The sixes are worth more points in the long run, but they don't have as many actions on it. So if you wanna do more things, well, then you want to use the one or the two but if you are at a point to where you just need malice, maybe you want to put the six there and just buy something. But then again, maybe you need that down here. So again, you have all those choices that you're making. And I think the way the dice are laid out and the different symbols on each one is very, very tight and very well done. So what you're basically hearing from me is the mechanics of the game is fun and good and I think has just the right amount of options to it. And I also really appreciate that once you're done, with the dice drafting, everyone goes at their own pace. There is no, well, I gotta wait for them to finish completely. And what that does to me is it just cuts down a lot of the waiting that can happen in Euro games, and I really appreciate that. Yes, everyone has to draft at the same time. You have to wait till that is done. And then yes, everyone has to do all the purchasing at the same time, because you're going in order and seeing what they buy and what else comes out and so on and so forth. And so yes, there's that, but the bulk of the game, you're doing at your own pace, and I enjoy that. And I also really appreciate the way these cards work. Yes, they give you bonuses, but it's almost as if the game recognizes that maybe you can't do this, because these are in-game storing conditions, and you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. So the ability to then spend a little malice and then use these for another action, which might be the thing you need to finish your prophecy here, or whatever it is, I think is a wonderful, wonderful touch. Now, what are my quibbles with the game? And the first couple have to do with the production, which might be fixed, because this is, as I said at the beginning, just a prototype. So one is, this here needs to be a little bit bigger, because when you start putting all the monsters on there, they're really smushed together and they fall over a bit because they're bumping into each other. The other one is a little bit with the theme. And that is right over here. So you have all your dice in your car and the die and the car is going to drive up and let them off onto the dock. Well, a dock is next to water. So that's confusing to me. Seems like it should be a boat or this shouldn't be water and a dock, but a road and I don't know, some steps or something. But that is the quibbliest of quibbles because the car is very cute and it looks really good. The other quibbles that I have are one, in the prototype, there are only four of these prophecies. 
I think there need to be a lot more because by the second game I played with my wife, we already knew what each other was doing just by glancing at their spider jack rows. We could say, oh, okay, well, they're going for that one. So there needs to be more of these for sure. And I also think that there definitely needs to be more variety, variety in these cards as well. There's several, but I do feel like right now as you're playing, you start to see the same ones over and over again. If there were more that did different things, to me, that would be so, so much more exciting. That's it. I think that this is a, a fun, lighthearted game that has a lot more strategy than you might guess based on reading the rules and looking at it and just looking at the kind of the cute miniatures and stuff, stuff and thinking, oh, well, that's just a cute game for a cute family game. It's not. It's more than that. It's still a light game, but it is fun. It is definitely an enjoyable game. And I'm going to go ahead and quote my wife here. She, she asked to play it again. She said, it's not art and it's fun. And to me, I feel like that actually sums this up perfectly. It's not hard and it's fun. The options are fun. The art is fun. The colors are fun. The car is fun. The dice are fun. Everything about it is just a fun game. So there you have it, folks. That is Monsters on Board, the, which is currently live on Kickstarter right now. Probably be about 10 days left when this video posts. And if you like dice drafting, then this is a good one because you're drafting stuff and each one is so very different. And every step of the way, it's doing something. And that is just fun. If you like kind of spatial puzzles, and again, this could be a good option because you have this big puzzle that you're working on here with these prophecy cards. And again, it, it's allowing you to have this kind of long build up this long lasting plan as you're trying to puzzle your way to it. Heck, it's worth checking out if you're just looking for another game to play on Halloween because it's adorable, it's Halloween-y, and quite frankly, if I get to hold on to this prototype through October, this will be the only third game I have that I really feel like I want to play on Halloween. The other ones being Mysterium and then maybe Triora, City of Witches, which is kind of dark and creepy because you're a witch and you might get burned by the Inquisition. So, you know, uh, it's a little heavy where this is, look, I'm going to throw the best Halloween bash. And if your bash isn't as good as my bash, then, well, you can just come on over here and we'll have a bash together. And so... All that being said, I think this is a fun game, and I think if any of that sounds like something you're interested in, go to the description, click on the link to the Kickstarter. As always, if I made any mistakes in the brief rules explanation, please let me know in the comments of the timestamp. I'll get that into the Klingon subtitles. I will also say that I am working on a solo playthrough of the game, and I am in contact with the solo designer, Drake Villarreal, to implement some of the balance changes he's working on, and so there will be a link to the solo play video down in the description as well, just as soon as I have that done. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.